Hello, my name is Stefan and today we'll be talking about recording rules, what they are, why you want them and how you can configure them in Grafana Cloud. A singer recording the music has two effects. Much more users can consume the singer's music at the same time. It's a more scalable approach. It's also easier on their voice if they don't have to sing whenever someone else wants them to perform a song. So, in a way, it puts a lot less strain onto their system, their voice. It's the same scenario for metrics queries. If you have many dashboards or alerts, and these are used by many users, so to speak, the underlying queries are run frequently, then you might observe a performance impact on those dashboards or alerts. However, if you do the expensive slow computation once and save the result as its own metric series, then you'll benefit from a more efficient and scalable approach in querying your metrics. This is exactly what recording rules allow you to do. In this presentation, I will show you what recording rules are, the impact they have and how you can create your own recording rules. This dashboard might look familiar to some of you if you've seen my previous video on how to create beautiful dashboards with Grafana and Grafana Loki. Now, one of the things that you can do here is show the distribution of several labels, log labels or parsed log labels in a certain time range. In this case, I show five minutes. And if you want to increase the time range, uh, which is the same as increasing the data volume to let's say one hour or to 24 hours or to 30 days, means the log volume is being increased. And as you can see, the queries that I'm performing take a much longer time. Depending on your system, it could be much earlier than 30 days that you will reach this point where the queries take a little bit longer. And if you have multiple users querying those dashboards a lot of times, then this will have an impact on your system. The users will be unhappy and they will not get their information in the time they need it. So what you can do here is to create a dashboard, the same dashboard using recording rules. And as you can see, I'm showing the last five minutes here, going to the last 24 hours and going to the last 30 days. And you can see I have those metrics instantly. This is because I stored them as metrics in Grafana Mimir and query them, query them from the metrics database, which is, as you can see, instantly. Recording rules are a Prometheus concept. Like alert rules and Prometheus queries, they are written in PromQL and are strongly connected to alerting in Prometheus, but don't necessarily have an operator to evaluate a threshold. The main purpose of recording rules is to increase performance for queries that aggregate metrics over often larger periods of time and are frequently used. The way this works is to perform these expensive queries only once as a recording rule and store the result back to the metrics backend as a new metric. Now this new pre-aggregated metric can be directly queried much faster. In the next few slides I'll go into the details of how this works. The result and benefits for recording rules are faster queries, more scalable dashboards and ultimately happier users that get their results faster to decrease the mean time to resolve issues. A user can always query metrics from Prometheus, Loki or Mimir as a data source directly. Some queries, especially metric queries from logs, might be slower, depending on the amount of log volume you're trying to aggregate. Hence, instead of querying huge data ranges very often to calculate aggregated metrics, it makes sense to calculate aggregates regularly for smaller data volumes. For example, once per minute for the last minute in a recording rule. The results are stored in a scalable backend like Grafana Mimir that is optimized to store and query metrics. Then the user can query the aggregated metrics directly, can perform further aggregations and analysis and benefit from a much lower query latency. Of course, the raw data is still available and the user can choose which ones to use for ad hoc queries, dashboards or alerts. 
For ad hoc queries, recording rules typically are not very suitable, since you need to know in advance what the aggregate is before you start recording. For dashboards and alerts, recording rule metrics are extremely powerful, as the queries typically do not change very frequently compared to the amount of queries they are firing. And especially when you have many users who are visiting dashboards very frequently, this gained performance impact will have a great impact on the end user experience. As mentioned, recording rules are a great way to speed up frequently used Loki metric aggregation queries. One of the core features of Loki is to allow you to extract metrics from logs. On the one hand, counting the number of logs that contain a specific string is considered a metric, but you can also extract numbers from the log lines themselves and aggregate them. The last use case is especially useful if you're interested in both the logs and the metrics, as this is a convenient way to collect the logs and use them to extract the metrics from them. If you ever wanted to extract aggregate metrics from Loki over large volumes of logs, as in the example that I've shown you, this could be multiple hours, days or weeks, depending on the general log volume you're ingesting, then you know that this can take quite a long time or run into a timeout entirely. This is where recording rules come to the rescue. Take this example query. It takes the log streams of the microbes cluster does some parsing for the log format, makes sure there is a method in the log line, and then counts the number of log lines in a Grafana dashboard time range, dollar underscore underscore range. Eventually, it sums the result by method. So you'd likely get all the occurrences of HTTP methods and can easily plot the distribution on a pie chart, for example. If your time range is small enough and hence the log volume is small enough, this query is powerful, useful and flexible as you can add additional filter statements at any time. If your log volume gets higher, you'll likely see an increase in query times as discussed. To overcome this, as mentioned, you'd create the following recording rule. As you can see, I'm creating the metric method colon microbes underscore log lines underscore per underscore minute colon sum. You notice that I execute the exact same query, but instead of querying the full range, I'm only querying the last minute. And I'm doing this every minute. This means that in total, I query and aggregate each log line only once for this use case. But in turn, I can aggregate the full range of aggregated metrics many times and at a much lower latency. As you can see, I'm querying the recorded metric over the full time range and every user can do this as often as they want and get their query result instantly, even for logs that are already outside of the retention period, as the metrics are typically kept much longer. Now the question is, how do you create recording rules and henceforth such a dashboard with Grafana Cloud? In Grafana Cloud, you would need to go to alert rules in the alerting and alerts and IRM sub menu. Now you can see alert rules and you can also see a section new recording rule. If you're new to Grafana and there is no alerts or there are no recording rules yet, then you will see a blue button here in the middle on the left hand side, create alert rule on the right hand side, new recording rule. Now we press new recording rule. We will give the recording rule a name. The name should be following Prometheus best practices, where you would put the aggregated labels in the front, separated by a colon, give the metric a name of what it actually represents. And then after another colon, you would state which aggregation you have been using. In our case, it's a sum. I'll be selecting the Loki data source that I'm querying. Now the query that we want to run is this one. But as mentioned, for the definition of the recording rule, since the rule is evaluated every minute, I will change that to one minute. The query is automatically run. I can see the last minute, the method is being extracted. I can also choose a namespace and a group. The group is important because 
it identifies how often the recording rule is run. In my log dashboard group, the recording rule is evaluated every minute. I can also define additional labels. And that's it. Save rule and exit. You can now see that in my folder, the recording rule is being created and we'll start recording from that moment on. After this recording rule is created, it will take a few minutes and then from that time on, every minute you will get a new data point. So let's try that. I will try to query that metric in explore mode. Now I have to choose the metrics data source and I can now choose that metric. It's already there. I can select a label. I added importance. I'm interested in only the get method and I can see there's one data point. The next one will be following soon. Now to recap of what we've seen and done, there's a few do's and don'ts when it comes to recording rules. Definitely record queries which are expensive aggregations, like take a long time with a high volume of logs, for example. Additionally, record queries with aggregations that are frequently used, for example, in popular dashboards. Also, if you have a metric stored in a log line, then extract it and aggregate it because a metric is better suited to be stored in a metrics backend than in a logs backend. The additional benefit of this is that you will have a longer retention because typically folks keep metrics far longer than they keep their log. Also, to make sure the whole setup doesn't get messy, follow naming conventions. Now, what you shouldn't be doing is reduce the number of labels of a metric because you will still keep the original metric with the many labels and the resulting label will have much less flexibility uh, as it has less labels, obviously. Also, never record queries with aggregations that are rarely used. You will be doing a lot of work creating those rules. You will be putting a lot of strain on the system for something that is not being used frequently anyways. At the end, I will link a few resources below in the video that you can visit to know how to name your recording rules as well as how to configure recording rules in Grafana Cloud. Thank you so much for listening and have a wonderful day.